Red Rising is a science fiction novel about a young man on Mars who is the lowest member of a society which has color-coded humanity. At the top you have golds who are the oppressive rulers of society and at the bottom you have reds who are these manual laborers that mine material to help humanity expand beyond Earth, Moon, and Mars to terraform the rest of the planets. But the story really kicks off with when Darrow, um, who is in love with a girl, uh, has the girl taken away from him, and she had this dream that they would live in a society that was free and just and equal. And Darrow's never wanted to risk his life and risk his family for this dream that she had. But when she's taken from him, he has no choice but to do just that, and to risk everything he has in order to try to overthrow these golds who would oppress his people. Uh, the inspiration for Red Rising came when I was on a mountain climbing trip with my friends. I'd been reading Antigone and we were going up this mountain face and it was just three of us in the middle of the night um, because you have to climb when the snow is hard and that's at night. And the stars are as close as they've ever been to me and they're just burning out of the sky and I couldn't think of anything but Mars, couldn't think of anything but this science fiction world and how it could meld with the theme of Antigone, which is basically a young woman standing up to cold power and the cold power of authority. And it's about the beauty of someone small being able to um, object against something unfair. And Red Rising really grew from that. The special thing about Darrow is that he's a young man who wants nothing but love and nothing but life and family and to live peacefully. But when his enemies bring him war, when they oppress his people, he has no choice but to rise up against them. And it's that he's always kind of at war with his own heart because as he infiltrates these golds, who are the rulers of the society, uh, he begins to find out that they may not just be his enemies, they are people too. And what's special about Darrow is that he sees the humanity in everyone. Even if they are a villain, even if they are evil and do evil things, he sees what makes them good or could make them good. And I think that makes him particularly noble. Darrow, I hope I don't know who the actor is yet. I want it to be an actor who is an actor first, not a celebrity, not someone who you might know in the tabloids, but someone who comes either from the screen or smaller movies and then really brings this kind of inner fury to the screen, much like a, a young Marlon Brando did or um, a Steve McQueen where you just know there's an intelligence and this darkness behind this maybe attractive exterior. It depends on who you ask. I guess my, my editor would say a lot, but then my editor is trying to make me feel good about myself. Now, Darrow's about this tall, so um, I'd say about this much Pierce is in Darrow. But overall, I think that Darrow is really reflective of me trying to uh, find acceptance because I lived in uh, eight different states. I went to 10 different schools, um, several different high schools. And each time you're trying to integrate yourself into this social hierarchy. And it's really difficult to do in high school. I mean, more difficult, I think, for girls than for guys because we have sports. And yet I still felt out of place even if I got accepted because I felt like I was changing parts of myself in order to gain new friends. And a lot of times that creates this conflict between who do I want to be perceived as and who am I, which is what Darrow struggles with. So that's what I think is most similar about Darrow and me. Um, not necessarily our heights.